everyone, Liam here. Welcome to a new YouTube video. It's been a little while, but the channel's back. We're going to be doing videos on a weekly basis. So hoping I'm hoping this video is going to be helpful. We're working on a Chaos Chosen today. It's going to be an army paint, so relatively quick. Lots of simple processes to get a, as strong a result as possible. If you do find the video helpful, please hit the like button, comment below, let us know what you think. It makes a huge, huge difference. And I'm really hoping to get the channel to grow so your support means a massive amount. But without further ado, here we go. So we're gonna start off with a cheap makeup brush. A lot of people like to use the Artist Opus dry brush brushes. I don't personally see the point in spending that much money on them. So these are cheap makeup brushes from like Poundland or Superdrug or something like that, just a cheap drugstore. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna use P3 Beaten Purple as the first color. Now what you notice is the model's primed black. This is because I want a really, really dark base. And then I'm gonna remove most of the paint off of the makeup brush. So not quite as much as a dry brush, but basically I need to remove enough so it doesn't leave big blobs of paint. Now, the idea with this is, I'm doing this really quickly, I need to do a solid base coat of this purple. And what you're gonna find is the black is gonna make this purple look a lot darker than it potentially is in the pot. So this took me a couple of coats. Really, really straightforward. Just slap the paint on. Don't worry about covering all of the details because remember, as long as you don't have a huge amount of paint on this brush, you're not going to obscure the detail. So as long as you remove the excess, you're fine. The next color that I'm gonna be using is Dakala Lilac from Games Workshop. I think that's what it's called, apologies, but I'll put a link in below. The idea with this is, same again, makeup brush, remove the excess, and I'm placing it onto the model where I'm going to have roughly brighter. I'm not worrying about blending, I'm not worrying about transitions, I'm putting in a highlight placement. And the idea with this is, is when we work over on the next step, the bright color is going to give us help with the transition. Now, I'm going back to the P3 beaten purple. You can see that that paint is semi-transparent. So I'm looking to thin the paint down enough so everything underneath is going to be tinted by the paint. So you can see what's happening is, is I'm painting over all of the model. I'm painting over the beaten purple that I did with the initial base coat. And I'm also painting over that transitional point between the Games Workshop Dakala Dachala Lilac. That transitional point from the P3 Beaten Purple and that Dachala Lilac. And what's happening is I'm using the tip of my brush. So I'm pretty much just stabbing this model with the tip of my brush. The idea with this again is we're going for a very rough texture, but the transparency of the paint is going to blend these two colors together so it takes two or three coats but you can work very very quickly you don't need to be neat about it all you're looking to do is break that transition that solid line and i think this took me about 10 minutes in the end and you can see like what we have is we have this more gradual transition between these two colors it does still look very messy and the reason why it looks very messy is because all of the paint is all over the trim and the details and that sort of stuff. So remember with army painting, the most important thing is, is the big features. So in this case, the armor is the biggest feature. We need to make sure that looks good and the fabric on the front and the trim. The rest of the details don't matter so much. So I'm gonna show you this bit because I think it's important to see the difference. Now, the idea here is we are going to thin this paint enough down so it breaks the surface tension on the paint. So what I want is I want my paint to be as opaque as possible while still being as fluid as possible. Now, what you can see here, you can see where I've done this brush stroke on the piece of plastic card. It's got a hole in the middle and towards the end of the brush stroke, it's very scratchy. Like it's not a clean line. This is telling us that that paint is still a little bit too thick because it's not giving us a nice sweeping brush stroke. So I'm gonna thin that paint down a little bit more, remove the excess off the kit on the kitchen roll, which is what you'll see me do. And then next time I do the brush stroke, you can still see that it's nice and opaque, but I don't have any of that tearing in the paint. So I'm looking for paint for my base coating because I don't wanna do two, three, four, five coats. I've got no time for that. This is a nice quick paint job with a good result. So I just wanna be able to do one coat. So the idea with this, remember, really, really important when base coating, you want the paint to be as opaque as possible while still being as fluid as possible. That's what you're aiming for. Now, the reason why I'm showing you me painting black on this so sped up is because you can see how much this is going to improve. Like as soon as all of that mess that we 
created with the makeup brushes disappears, all of a sudden this purple starts looking really, really nice. And this is a really important thing that I'm constantly talking to people about is if you're unsure about how something looks, make sure that you black out or at least base color the areas surrounding what you're painting because it will drastically change how you perceive it. So next thing, nice and simple. I'm going to try and push the highlight a little bit. So I'm going for a semi-transparent paint again. This is the same transparency as the beaten purple I used previously. So the idea is whatever color goes, whatever color this goes over the top of is going to be tinted by this paint. So I'm not looking for opaqueness, I'm looking for some transparency. This bit is a bit of an optional step, but the idea here is the bright spots on the shoulder, the helmet, on the chest, in these areas, I'm pushing a little bit brighter just to make it pop. Now, I can't use the the, the Charla, the Charla Lilac, because I've already gone as bright as that. So what I've done with this is I've added a tiny bit of white to the Dachala Lilac, and then obviously I've thinned it down like I showed you. So the whole concept, the whole idea behind this is we want to create, first of all, when we're miniature painting, we need to create readability. We need to have clear separation of shapes. That's the most important thing when it comes to miniature painting. After that, we want to create nice contrast in value, so in light and dark. And this is what we're trying to achieve here right now. We've got very, very dark shadows in that black, and that blacky purple that we've left there. Now we're trying to push to these nice little shine spots. So we have that range in value. And then the last thing is once we have all of that transition down that we're kind of happy with, we introduce the edge highlights and any recess lines that you need to create to separate all of the shapes. This is really, really important. I know everyone talks about you need to increase contrast all the time. Um, and that's normally the first go to, but actually, the most important thing with miniature painting is readability and we create contrast to reinforce readability. So it's readability first, contrast second. And this is why if you look at especially old school GW paint jobs, Games Workshop paint jobs, where they have a base color and they have edge highlights everywhere, those models look nice. Whether you like that style or not is irrelevant. Those models do look nice. The reason for that is, is because they have very solid readability. Now, because we're going for a whole worn, battered paint job on this armor, I've added in a few little scratches and marks. You don't need to do this, and personally, I probably wouldn't if I was doing this for myself, but I think it's important to show because if you've got an area of the model that you don't like the transition, it looks a little bit funky, you can put a scratch over the top of it and it will hide it. Now, next thing is the trim. The trim needs to be black for this. I'm using scale 75 black metal for the metallic. And I'm just putting a base color over the whole top. But if this trim isn't bright, uh, isn't black, what happens is, is that black metal will be a lot brighter than it needs to be. And you'll also probably have to do more than one coat. And we don't want that. So black base coat, introduce the scale 75 black metal. This is basically a very, very dark steel color. Cover the whole lot. And the idea with this is the reason why we're using silver is because it's a nice cold color in comparison to the purple. It's very neutral. It's going to make the purple pop. Next thing, Games Workshop Nolan Oil, because obviously this is a speed paint. We want a really cool result very, very quickly. We're going to be using a lot of washes. Games Workshop Nolan Oil. The idea with this, first of all, is I am going over the silver, but the big priority is what I'm trying to do is go over the silver areas of trim, and I want the Nolan Oil to seep into the recess between the trim and the purple, because again, this creates readability, gives us a nice, nice dark line, between the purple and the silver. Readability first, remember, especially with army painting. We've already got nice purple armor, which means once we have that nice purple armor, it doesn't really matter what we do, unless we choose a really weird color for something, this model is going to look nice. The purple armor looks great, the model's gonna look great. Everything else, if we wanted to, we could just base coat and that would be acceptable. Next thing that we're gonna do, the Nuln Oil is dry. You can see I've got silver on my brush. This is scale 75 heavy metal. This would be something like Lead Belcher for Games Workshop. But this is scale 75 heavy metal. Removing the excess from my brush, not like a dry brush, I'm just removing the excess. So it's not quite removing all of it. And then what I'm doing is I'm doing a very gentle brush stroke across everything. So this brush stroke is a lot like dry brushing, but the difference is because you have a lot more paint on it, with dry brushing, you're very, very, you press quite hard to catch all of the edges. 
and it can be quite messy. We don't really want to do that. We don't want to get it all over the purple. So in this case, we have a little bit more paint, not enough to obscure any details. We dry brush effectively over the silver areas, but very, very softly. So we're doing it gentle. And the idea with this is it's not only going to pick out the edges, it'll also pick out the raised edges. So it's a really, really simple way of doing silver. Next up, we're going to paint the horns. Games Workshop Rhinox Hide. The horns are painted black. We put the Rhinox Hide over the top. The Rhinox Hide is very, very dark. I don't really want black in the recesses because it looks a little bit unnatural in my opinion. But the Rhinox Hide is going to be the effectively the, the darkest, darkest shadow. So the majority of it's going to disappear. The next thing is, is Games Workshop Mournfang Brown. This is quite a nice orangey brown to use. And we're going to cover most of it. All we're basically going to do with this is leave the recesses in place. And what's, what's really interesting here is we don't need to worry about super smooth blends. In fact, um, in fact, with these blends, we can afford to have big messy brush strokes you can see like the horn on his shoulder pad for example the horns on his head those brush strokes are really really quite harsh so i'm not worrying about creating really really smooth transitions what i'm trying to create is a big jump in value a big jump in light and dark because again what we're going to do after that is we're going to introduce much um we're going to introduce washes to blend all of that together so what i've got is mournfang brown and then i've added in some Zandri dust to push the highlight really really bright and then games workshop caraborg crimson wash i painted over the whole thing to give it a nice reddish tint and then once that's dried i put a wash of nolan oil over the top once it's all dried what's going to happen is a lot of those marks start smoothing together so it saves us a lot a lot of effort this took me like five minutes um, because basically once the washes go on i just use the hair dryer to dry them and then the last thing is, is once again, thinking about readability, I'm going back with the Zandri dust, I think it was. Um, yeah, going back with the Zandri dust with, uh, and we're focusing on the edge highlights. So the idea with this is, is we're trying to frame the shapes. So edge highlights and the, sh the lines to frame the actual shapes of the objects that we're painting, just so it doesn't look very, very messy. Because when you put a wash over something, it can get a look very washed out and details can be obscured. Next, we're gonna do exactly the same with the fabric. Um, I just used black and white for this. I just mixed up some grays. I painted the fabric gray. You can use whatever grays you want. And then again, I got a blue wash. I think this was Drakenhof Nightshade. Painted it over the whole thing, let it dry. It gives a nice blue tint, smooths out some of the more questionable brush marks from our speed painting, and then introduce the edge highlights for the fabric nice and straightforward so we're using the washes in this case to smooth out some very fast speed painting the main thing that you need to remember when using washes is you don't want them to puddle so the minute that you have a puddle of wash sat on your miniature get a clean brush a dry brush roughly dry brush and just remove the excess from that wash so you can just absorb it up the blade is really, really simple. Um, all I've done is painted the blade with heavy metal silver from scale 75. And then I've done two washes of Drucci Violet over the top. And then I've placed in some uh, edge highlights for that heavy metal silver as well to frame the shape of the blade. I didn't want to go too crazy on the blade, but if you are interested in painting really, really nice, like colored weapons, then I've got a video, the link will be in the description below, so feel free to check it out. And that's it. I'm hoping it's been clear. I'm hoping it's been helpful. Thank you everyone who's watched and who is supporting. If you do want to support, feel free to check out the Patreon for more in-depth video tutorials, such as the Stormcast Eternals, for example, that you can see on screen at the moment. But regardless, thank you everyone. Make sure you hit the like button, leave a comment. Cheers.